Hello guys, uh, welcome to this tutorial. Um, from this tutorial, we're going to start working on machine learning problems, um, creating simple and maybe later on more complex applications using neural networks uh, in TensorFlow in Python. Um, so if you don't have a lot of background in Python, I do recommend you go and watch some uh, videos about basics of Python and then come back here. Um, because I, I do think it's going to help you. But um, nonetheless, some of the examples in this, uh, in this tutorial series that I'm going to be making is going to be from the original, from the official uh, TensorFlow website. So you can find all of them actually there. But it's just that uh, I will, in some cases, simplify and try to dive deep into some of the topics that I personally think might be a little abstract for some people. So yeah, if, if you're new to machine learning and programming in general, maybe it's, I think it will be very useful for you. If you're already an expert, you know, maybe, maybe you will gain some new insights. Um, but um, uh, with any case, so what do you want to do today? Well, today we want to work on the Fashion MNIST um, uh, machine learning program. So if you are familiar with uh, maybe some machine learning or, or neural networks, you probably have heard of MNIST, which was this big data set of handwritten digits uh, from zero to nine. And uh, it was basically to help uh, recognize, I think it was the original use case was to uh, recognize the uh, post codes or zip codes on, on letters. Um, and uh, later on, there is, you know, this thing called Fashion MNIST, it's not that old actually, but it's basically a very similar data set of uh, 70,000 images. There are 28 by 28 pixels and they're clothing images. They're therefore, um, you know, a clothing item. So you got, you got different, different stuff in it. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you read the documentation, I'm here on, on Kaggle, you can, I'm going to leave this uh, in the description as well for you to see. Uh, if you read it, you'll see that there's 10 clothing items. Actually, it's very similar to the kind of output we want from um, from the or traditional MNIST. Um, zero being t-shirt and the ninth being ankle boot and then everything in between. Um, so we're going to use those for, for labels. Um, of course, totally there is 70,000 images. So, you know, we will use the, the, the kind of the training data provided within TensorFlow as well as the testing data that is provided. They're already separated. So all we need to do is to just kind of load them and put them into uh, the training uh, model. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's actually get started doing it. Um, first thing we want to do is to just import TensorFlow. So import TensorFlow. STF, and I'm hoping this will enable syntax highlighting for me so that, you know, we can see what we are writing here. Um, okay, but the first thing we need to do is to actually import the data that we want. So within TensorFlow, you probably know there's this higher level of, I guess, neural network um, library called Keras. So we use that to work with our data today. So we'll just um, call it image data uh, and we import it from tf dot keras dot um, data sets and dot fashion mnist okay so this is our data set and we're going to be loading it uh, in a little bit as a matter of fact i'm just going to load it in this um, cell of the notebook Okay, there is a problem. Oh, tensor. So I think I miswrote it. Tensor flow. And then we're going to run it again. And I think it just loaded it for us. I did not see the progress bar. But um, and just to confirm that, I'm going to add another cell here. And uh, I'll say, so what we want to do is to basically divide our data into training data or training images, as well as testing images. Why? I'm going to tell you that in a second. But what I'm going to do right now is to divide all of those images that you just saw here 
into two sections of training data and testing data. So I'll create two sets or two tuples here, one called train and then image is and then train and labels all right and then another one another tuple is going to include train oh, sorry actually test images and test labels all right so then how is it going to get it well it's inside of our image data so if i say image data dot load data it's a function and it will load the data um, by deconstruction into uh, these two parts so we have training images and the training labels which means for any given image there's going to be a given label for example if there's a shoe image if we go back here we'll see that for example um, ankle boot for example is number nine so if there's an image of ankle boot relatively there's going to be a label for it number nine indicating that it's an ankle boot so like you have something like a uh, you know a, a name for a given data okay so then how do we confirm that well let's actually let's actually see what is inside of train images so train images i want to so i know that it's a list okay but let's see what is inside of the list okay here you can see that we have a list of lists all right what you need to know is that this is in fact our image in the form of a list so the images inside of mnist are black and white and you get the value between 0 to 250 representing each pixel so black is 0 and 250 is going to be white so although you cannot see the image here this in fact is our image data and to confirm that instead of doing this what i'll do here is that i will put this uh, in a uh, plot for you a uh, matplotlib plot so i'm going to say import uh, matplotlib okay so we already have that dot pi plot as plt and then uh, i'll just say plt dot i am show and i will put this one inside of it so if i run this again in fact you will see that there's going to be a ankle boot image now this is not very clear but we know that it's an ankle boot just to double confirm that what i'll do is that after after i show this image i'm going to also show the corresponding label for this image i expect the label to be number nine so let's see train labels and i want the zero width out of the labels out of out of here so if i run this again and in fact here right here you can see that number nine appeared now of course my method of showing you this data might, might not be the prettiest but this is how it's basically working right now we are dividing our image data and our um and the labels um and they're they're all kind of corresponding to each other okay perfect so uh i'm going to delete this actually right now i don't need it anymore you can keep it there if you want you know it's really up to you um but we want to move down to the next part of our uh you know uh, you know this part of the tutorial where actually or the machine learning process or neural network creation process which is going to be data pre-processing let me drink some water all right so what is data pre-processing well like i told you the values that we're going to get inside of the list that is representing the image is going to be between 0 to 250. the truth is it's not the greatest idea to work with machine learning models or neural network models with these big numbers all right 
Rather, you want to have smaller numbers because of the way, you know, the, for example, the activation functions work, or generally how the math works within these models. All right. So you want to keep the numbers small. Now, depending on the kind of activation function you're using, and depending on the kind of training you're trying to do, um, you will pre-process these models differently. For us, we want to use, later on, we'll use the ReLU model. And the, uh, the best, the most effective way to pre-process the data is to keep it between 0 and 1. All right. So basically, we will convert or remap all of those data that are between 0 to 250 to between 0 and 1. So we're going to get some decimal numbers as well. All right. How do we do that? Well, we're just going to say train x or rather train images equals I'm more used to writing X and Y because it's a more conventional but for now for convenience it's better to write train images and this is pr probably how you're gonna find it on um, on the tensorflow website as well so we're just gonna say train images divided by 255.0 we want to make sure it's decimal all right we don't want to get any any other one, uh, you know, like we don't want to get a full like zero or one. It's not binary. Um, and then we will do the same thing with the testing. So we say test images equals test images divided by 255. Okay. So this way, all of those data within those, um, you know, within, within those, um, uh, data li data list that we have are converted. As a matter of fact, we can just take a look again. So test actually train images zero. If we look at that, we will see that they're converted to. You can see there is no no longer we have only zero and you know full numbers. Rather, we have decimal numbers represented between zero and one. Okay, great. So we get rid of that. Um, and let's go and make another cell right here. So then here comes the next part of the machine learning process. And this is probably the more uh, complex part of it. So you want to define a model that includes some neural networks inside of it. Now, what a neural network is, the, the real definition of it, we're going to put it maybe in the future. If you want to know, if you maybe, maybe if you're not very familiar with it, um, you can let me know and then maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. But I'm assuming that you at least know what a neural network is. Um, here is where we're going to actually implement it. And um, a very common neural network that we can use is called, it's called a feed forward neural network. Inside of Keras, it's called a sequential network. Okay. And um, the way we do it is going to be like this. So we're going to create our model and we're going to say tf.keras.sequential. And that actually did highlight for us, so it's great. And it will take a list of functions. And the functions are going to be our um, layers that we're going to define. So let me get rid of that. And we're going to go there. So the first function that we're going to provide here is going to be how we want our data to be reshaped. Let me get out my sketch pad here. So right now we're getting images that are, of course, some shape like this. And inside of them, they have data for each pixel. And we have columns and rows, which makes it a two dimensional data or a two-dimensional array, or two-dimensional list, whatever you want to call it. As it turns out, it's not the greatest idea to use two-dimensional data for creating neural networks. So what the smart people who actually developed these algorithms and, and networks realized was that, okay, if we get all of these data and put them into one single line, so imagine this whole image being one single line, and then having all of the data to be in one single row, rather than having columns and rows. 
This is going to make the job a lot easier and more accurate and faster, generally. So that's what we want to do in the very first layer of our neural network. So how do we do that? Well, instead of TensorFlow, there is this thing called flatten. So we will say tf.keras.layers.flatten. And then we will provide the input shape of our data. Our data, like I said, is going to be images that are 28 by 28 pixels. So we will say it to this flatten layer. So we'll say input shape is 28 by 28, like so, as is that we have to use equal because it's not a function. So all this will do, this will do no training, this will do no like real machine learning, quote unquote, this will do reshaping for our model, for our uh, images, okay? So the next thing we want to do is the actual neurons that are going to do calculation on, our, on, on the numbers within the image. So the ones that we want to use today, and you can find on the official website of TensorFlow, is going to be a dense layer or a fully connected layer. So basically, it's a bunch of nodes or neurons that will do some kind of calculation on everything that you input to it. Uh, I strongly recommend you go and watch three blue, one brown's uh, video about backpropagation and neural networks in general. It has a very great explanation on them and the animations there make a lot of sense. But if I wanted to give you a very quick explanation here, imagine this little thing, this little uh, line or row of data that we got from our image. This is nothing but those numbers that we have inside of the image data. Imagine we pass each one of them into, so imagine again, this is the data from the image. Each one of these represents one single pixel value. And then imagine we have some functions here, all right? And we pass all of these to each of these functions. And what they do is that they're going to do some calculation on that number. Now, the, the math behind this is actually very interesting and something that I will be talking about in the future. Now, I'm not the greatest mathematician, but I found this math to be very interesting, really. Um, and I might, uh, you know, talk about it in the future. But what happens, what I want you to just think about as a programmer is that there's some kind of a function, mathematical function or equation, that is going to do some work on the number that we give it and then output something else. All right? And this output is going to be the one that is going to determine what is, what is the output of the entire network, which in turn is going to determine what is the image data that we are providing it here. Okay, so that's all we're doing right now. So we're going to create a dense network to do that calculation for us. So we'll say tf.keras.layers.dense. And then here, we're going to say how many of those equations do we, do we want to have. So on the official website, they chose the number 128. I'm guessing they probably did a lot of trial and error until they got to this number. But the reality is this number, you can change it as you wish. However, when you do, the result of your network is going to change as well, meaning that you might get more accurate or less accurate results depending what, on what this number is. Normally, they say the more the better, but the more the slower as well. All right, it's just going to take longer to calculate. So, um, you know, keep keep that in mind. But for now, we're we're just going to go with the with the official website's recommendation, and then we have an activation function. All right, now this activation function is the thing that I was just telling you about earlier, where it's going to kind of decide what is going to be the output 
of each of these neurons depending on the input that we're going to give it okay so and the output is going to be between a certain number all right now there are many different activation functions that we can use um, uh, for now we're just going to stick with relu again because it's a recommended one with um, the tensorflow website and you know there are some other mathematical reasons that again i will be talking about maybe in the future uh, there's a great book uh, that i really love and i'm going to be using in the future it's called neural network design um, by i think it's martin t hagen great book fantastic it, it really dives deep into how these things work i will be using those to explain to you the mathematics behind it but for now just trust the process okay all right so after those calculations are done i want to have a way for me to know how like what is going to be the result of those calculations meaning that okay you did all of that calculation for me but then what are you giving me back well this is very similar to the traditional mnist neural networks that we usually design and it's just that we want to have 10 different outputs representing um, the number the first category of uh, our uh, you know our images to the ninth category uh, again if i go back here to show you we want to have 10 outputs that can tell us roughly what kind of image was it that we just represented into the network okay so we will use again a dense layer so tf dot keras dot layers dot dense but in this time we're going to have 10 different um, neurons for it and they're going to represent the numbers within them are going to represent the output of the network okay the output um, how do we calculate the output well you know the, uh, there's going to be a probability so the, the network is going to give us 10 numbers but all of these numbers are going to be different and we will pick the one with the highest probability to be the correct answer i will tell you about that a little bit later but before that let's actually get into uh pretty much the final section of our of our uh you know training and by the way if i run this right now you'll see that hopefully if i actually run the entire code and it's not doing anything well yes that's correct yeah i just wanted to kind of check whether or not it was going to give us an error yes so that's great so um the next thing that we want to do is called compiling the model so you've you've designed it you know everything looks good let me adjust my seat here you've designed it and everything looks good and the next thing you want to do is to describe certain uh, parameters for it so that first of all for example it knows how to calculate um, whether or not it is doing good or bad and what kind of uh, methods should it use to to do that all right so the, uh, again on the website of uh, tensorflow they recommend for us to use this following um basically combination uh, I'll, I'll just use it i'm going to explain it to you in a second so model dot compile so optimizer is the first thing that we want to kind of provide here and the recommendation is to use atom all right so what is this optimizer is used for well we basically want to kind of decide how uh, you know the the data that our model is predicting how is it affecting the general output all right or how how it should uh, basically kind of affect the, the the network to make the predictions better to optimize it okay so again there's a lot of math uh connected to this one we will talk about it in the future as a matter of fact probably the most math that you're going to get here is going to be within 
this section, all right? But uh, we're going to kind of keep it right there. So remember, this optimizer is just telling the network how it should update the values to reflect the changes depending on the loss that it had. All right. Now, what loss? Well, that's the next thing. So it should have a loss function to decide how to calculate those losses. All right. So we'll create a loss function here. And within tf.keras.losses, and we have this thing called sparse categorical cross entropy. So this is a mathematical function that can calculate the loss that we had within our um, model. So if the model is predicting something and it's wrong, how wrong is it? All right. How much mistake has it made? And how do we want to fix it? Well, that's the job of the optimizer. All right. Um, the next thing that uh, the the uh, basically argument that we need to provide here, and you can see it from here. Actually, it's, it already says from logits or logits, how, however you want to pronounce it. Um, we want to set that to true because we did not change anything with the output of the of the layer. We didn't activate it with anything. We just kept it as is. So we're just gonna say from Logits equals true. All right. Actually, in Python, we have a capital true. So if we did have an optim a, a activation for the output of the layer or the network, we would maybe set this one to false specifically for soft mask, soft max, um, um, uh, you know, um, activation however we don't we're just keeping everything as is so um, we don't we don't change this one so we're just going to set this one to true and then finally we need to have some kind of a met metric or a way for us to determine you know how well our network is doing the way we do that is by using the metrics and saying that okay i want to use the accuracy accuracy yeah so this will determine how accurate the network um, the neural network actually is working okay so finally we're just gonna go ahead and train our network so how do we do that we're just gonna say model dot fit and then we will provide the training data as well as the labels. So remember, we said every image that we have has a corresponding label to it. So a ankle boot image, number nine is corresponding to it, and so on and so forth. So we're going to provide those here. So we're just say train images and train labels. And then we're just we're, we're going to say epochs equal to 10, which means I want you to repeat training this model 10 times. I want you to go through 10 times of iteration to train this model. Basically, what happens is that when we run this model one time, it's going to get a little bit better. But the second time, it's going to get even a little bit better because it's optimizing it every time we run it. Okay, so after the 10th time, again, according to the Google's website, the TensorFlow website, it's the optimal number for now. You can play around with this, maybe do 12, maybe do 20. It's going to take longer and see how it's going to change your, um, change your results. Um, but number 10 seems to be working just fine for the time being. All right. So if I run this right now, you can see that here it starts training the model and right here you'll see it says accuracy at 0 0.82 and how I want you to read is 82% accurate okay which means our model is predicting those images with an accuracy of 82% in the first step but then the last step we expect to see a better number in this case well 91% accuracy well then how can we 
How can we know that? How can we, um, uh, you know, confirm that? Well, here's what we're going to do. Here I'm going to say model. So we did, we already trained our model. So now I say model dot predict, and I will provide the data that I want. So I want to say test images. So you remember we had test images here, and I'm guessing this is going to probably probably not going to work because I I didn't see anything. Let me try it. Okay, and I will say zero with. Yeah, this is because you know I didn't run the entire thing, so it it probably lost this one out of the buffer. So I'm gonna run the entire thing again, so that it has that in the buffer, and it's gonna recognize what test images are. But anyways, this is going through the iteration of training the the model again, and what I expect here is that I uh, if, after I do the prediction, I need to get back a array or a list of 10 numbers representing the probability of each number being um, kind of um, representing each of the categories of the clothing image. Now here, ah, come on, I wrote text here. So that will, in fact, you see, guys, I don't edit these videos. So if I make silly mistakes like this, I hope you forgive me. Okay. Anyways, so this is a com this is a list of no uh, 10 numbers in fact you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 numbers and each of them are kind of representing the probability of um you know uh of um of the output of the uh, uh you know the input that we have for example here i'm giving the zero width image of the testing images all right i expect that to be the boot, all right? Here, I'm getting a bunch of numbers, but how do you interpret that? Well, you wanna look at the biggest number, okay? So in this case, we have a lot of negative numbers, but if you notice, here is the, it says seven. So this is, in fact, our biggest number. We have a one here as well, but the biggest number here is number seven. And I want you to know in which place is it or which index is this. So, well, if we start in a list, we start from the index 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this is the ninth index. So since it is in the ninth index and it's the biggest number, I can only determine that this is predicting number 9, which is ankle boot. Um how do we know that well let's actually go ahead and um let's actually go ahead and see what is uh, the ninth image in our test data so if i say um let's just say did i import the okay i didn't i didn't import it but uh, let me just say test um labels and zero with and if i run this again i expect to get a number nine there and there you can see number nine okay so meaning that the model actually predicted i remember i didn't show this test images to the to the to the model i only gave it the data and it predicted that the ninth um, basically place or the ninth output of our our um, neural network had the highest probability of being uh, related to the input data that we had, and therefore, because we know that the ninth one is represented representing the ankle boot. Sorry for the noise in the background. Um, then we know that uh, you know this model is in fact working. So here we only have 91% accuracy. So this can get better maybe by providing better data and more data and, and um, you know, a, a variety of them. But for now, 91% of accuracy is a lot. All right. So that's it. So this is the beginning of what's, you know, what, what you like to call a um, uh, kind of a machine learning journey or, or a neural network journey or AI journey or whatever you want to call it. It's simple, but at the same time, there are parts of it that can get a little bit confusing. I would say 
there is a lot of um, um, unfamiliarity with the concepts or with the with the core of uh, what machine learning actually is. Me myself sometimes get confused uh, about certain things. Now I do recommend you guys, you know, go and read and you know do more, do your own research. More importantly, get your hands dirty and work with it to really understand it. But uh, having a better understanding of these kind of deep, um, deep meanings, uh, deep um, definitions of different problems is very helpful, which I, which is what I'm trying to do with these tutorials, all right? So I really hope that you found this helpful. This was, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure for some of you this might be challenging, for some of you it might be a piece of cake, but I tried my best and hope, uh, you really hope that you actually enjoyed it. But um, uh, yeah, so that's it for, for this tutorial. If you have any suggestions, please leave it down below in the description, in the comment section. And if you enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.